censorship, an important issue even in the comic book industry. Tony talked about the issue with some of the more prominent and radical members of the industry, and here's what they had to say. With Canadian Customs, I can't send anything across the border with Boneyard Press on it at all. When we first started out, the uh, Guns N' Roses people threatened us with a lawsuit, uh, which never developed. Uh, then later down the line, new kids on the block decided to uh, get out a temporary restraining order uh, against us, and uh, we went to court. Canada? They, yeah, well, they wouldn't ship it in. There, uh, you know, we had several distributors uh, right by the border, outlets in uh, in Oregon, with you know Washington State, and uh, they couldn't move the book into Canada because of uh, the content of the first issue. Has any of Extremes project projects or books like ever had any complaints about getting away with something that violates the authority code or? Uh, not that I know of. We don't actually go through the Commerce Code Authority. Um, but I, I can't think of anything we've ever had a problem with. In fact, we've just recently released a book called Profit, and we've received so many letters from uh, mothers and fathers in the mail saying, wow, this is the kind of comic I, I want my kid to read. We strive to make comics that are, are not for G audiences, but for PG-13. We want audiences that, you know, uh, com comics that challenge, that expand. We're not looking to do, you know, soft and furry comics. But we do comics that are not X-rated or hard R-rated comics because we want as many people to read them as possible. It's not that we shy away from sex or violence. We just present it in a way that, that uh, I, I guess the emphasis is on good taste. And uh, uh, we do remember hearing at some point that ElfQuest was on uh, one of the Christian broadcasting channels as, as one of the bad things that your children shouldn't read. But we were very proud of that. You know, we, we've always pretty consciously maintained a, a PG attitude. Uh, you know, we we understand that you know parents will occasionally look at their kids' books against against censorship. I mean, or and or for freedom of speech. Um, I understand the retailers' concerns, and we do get letters and calls from parents. We've been taking some steps on on a number of our our titles. Uh, for instance, all the superhero titles and the aliens and predator books. I sent this Rush Limbaugh script, written words, uh, pictures from Newsweek, total satire, total comedy, and they wouldn't let it through. I have no idea why not, so I sent it under a fake name and it got through no problem. But little comic book stores, I mean little guys who, who take in $100,000 gross every year and maybe come home with $15,000, $20,000 income in their pocket, and here this multimillionaire is causing their uh, insurance company to settle with him for $1,000. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund is a nonprofit organization, and we support the First Amendment rights of the comic book industry, either through um, retailers, publishers, artists, whoever happens to be being prosecuted for offensive or anything having to do with First Amendment issues. With some of the problems you've been having, has the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund, have you been involved with them at all? I tried to get them to help me out with the Dahmer lawsuit, but they're really more set up to help the comic store owners, not so much the publishers, especially not a guy like me. Generally, the reason stores are getting busted is because, the again, I know it sounds like I'm harping on it, the comic industry is so small and frail. I mean, everybody wants to pretend this is a big industry just because somebody's making a million dollars. We have no legal recourse. Stores are easy to slam into because these groups that have problems with free speech and expression of, and art are able to attack comic stores because comic stores are an obscure industry that does not have wide popularity. I'm, I'm the president of the Comics Magazine Association of America, and I once a week I'll get a call from some investigative reporter someplace saying, how can you permit those excessively violent comic books where hearts are getting ripped out and eaten and sh sh dropped on the floor? I say, hey, wait a minute. These are make-believe people. I say, do you read the comic? Do you read the newspaper every day? Do you watch television at six o'clock at night? What do you see on the screen every night? Dead bodies covered with sheets. What do you see on the front page of the New York Times? Dead bodies being dragged through the streets in Somalia. Who looks at that besides adults? Kids see that. It lies around. It's there. Don't come after the comic book industry. You know we're a, an industry that is a make-believe industry. It's a. It's a it's an entertainment industry, and publishers should be allowed to publish what they want.